Hello there, YouTube. I'm Vince White. Come on in a little bit closer here. I'm an employment attorney, and we're answering a question from a friend of the channel today. Uh, Pharaoh Schuyler asks, I have a question. Thoughts on pro se litigation for people who can't afford attorneys and who cannot find a firm willing to take the case with a right to sue letter due to a time crunch of studying. Okay. So we'll define a few things in here because, you know, the average viewer might not have the, a full grasp of things. Uh, pro se litigation is litigation where you're representing yourself. The right to sue letter is a letter that the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission gives you um, on about, yeah, I think like a huge percentage of cases, uh, which allows you to go on to Equal Employment Opportunity, uh, which allows you to go on to federal litigation. So I think that defines the terms that we need to talk about this. And I think the question here is, um, so it's someone who went through the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, maybe on their own, didn't go the way they wanted, the case didn't resolve the way they wanted, they didn't get the settlement they wanted, and now they have what's called this right to sue letter. And that right to sue letter gives you uh, 90 days generally speaking, to file your case in federal court. And if you let the 90 days run out, there's very few exceptions to that, right? There's very few extensions. There's very few tolling agreements. It's, it's very unlikely uh, that after the 90 days, you're still going to be successful filing that claim in federal court uh, using that right to sue letter. So that can be tough on people because they get the right to sue letter and they say, oh my gosh, I only have uh, 90 days to go hire counsel. Here's the thing. A lot of attorneys don't love taking on federal litigations after you've been kind of uh, messing around yourself in the agencies, right? So um, there's a lot of cases that come in and, and you know you can look at them and say, okay, if we had taken this case from the start, we could have added value and reduced risk. But uh, you handled the agency case yourself because you were pro se, you're representing yourself, and you put a whole bunch of things in writing some of which we don't like. Some of which is a firm who's going to be, you know, paying out money on this case to cover the expenses and whatnot. We have to look at some of these things you put in writing and say, man, that adds a lot of risk and it does not add value, right? And that's not great. That's not great for anyone. So sometimes when you're in that position, uh, firms will say, hey, yeah, we're not going to make you an offer. Okay, that's not great. Sometimes... You can't really find a firm to make you an offer on the case. That stinks. That's really scary because being pro se in federal court, you know, representing yourself in federal court can be extremely difficult and horrifying. Frankly, it can be really tough. If you don't know what you're doing. Even longstanding litigation attorneys who are used to state courts and then end up in federal court, even they, whew, I, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. They get, they get beat up, right? So, um... Not always. Not always. Just some of them. If you're not used to federal court, it can be challenging. So you can't find an attorney. You say your only choice is to represent yourself. Okay. That's not great. Your 90 days is running out. Don't let the 90 days run out. Worst case scenario, get something filed with that right to sue letter. And in most federal court systems, you're going to have the opportunity to amend later. So at least get something filed. Don't let your right to sue letter run out. Um, generally speaking, you know, talk to talk to local attorneys. This is all general advice. I'm not, you know, not giving any specific advice in any specific situation. I'm just saying uh, if you can avoid your right to sue letter running out, it's going to be so much better for you in the scheme of things. Okay. So now you're in federal court. You're representing yourself. I would say keep trying to find an attorney if you cannot. Check if there's a pro se support office that will help you at this federal court. And I don't know how often that will be available, but it would be something for you. Um, I don't generally know too many successful pro se litigants. Sometimes... Um, you know, we refuse a case and somebody will call us up and be like, ha ha ha, I got $30 million. And it's like, y you didn't, you're lying. Stop. Like you, you didn't represent yourself and get $30 million. Stop. Right. Um, and, and that's just because they're mad that you wouldn't take their case or, you know, 
they think that us not making an offer means that we don't think they were wrong. That is not the case. It's just us not making an offer or our firm not making an offer generally does not mean that we think your case is not legitimate. It means that, hey, you're asking us to pay tons of money to cover things on your case, right? To risk 10, 20, 30, maybe $40,000 in a federal litigation. And you kind of been kidding around with it. You kind of messing around with the case, doing stuff that's not ideal, representing yourself, playing, playing lawyer. And often, you know, the case isn't really in a place where we can say to you, yeah, let us, let us roll. Let's, let's invest. Let's throw money at this case for you so we can help you. No, you did things on your own. You took a risk. You want, you, you didn't want to pay an attorney and that's fine. I respect that. But sometimes the things you do when you don't know what you're doing, they're not things that I can undo, right? And that's your call. You're the boss. You're a smart person. You make your own choices. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you, you want something from me that I don't want to do anymore because you, you did some things, right? So, yeah, pro se litigation on, on the federal level can be brutal. It can be brutal on the state level. State courts are tough, but I think more state courts have pro se support offices. Um, that's my thought. I, I hope I answered the question. If I didn't, throw a comment down below i'll try to answer the question more directly if you specify if this helped you consider liking and subscribing um it helps me to help more people just like you